here's what I have found. When I was, when my, my children were younger, uh, my kids are 19 and 22 now, but when they were in elementary school, I was a drop-off dad and I loved getting to drop them off at elementary school and in middle school and even the tormenting first couple years of high school, ninth and 10th grade before they were mobile. And as I would drop them off every single day, I would say to them, today is the best day of your life. Live it, love it, make the most of it. And they would groan and sigh, Dad, no, it's not. This is not a good day. Yes, it is. And it is true for all of us that today is absolutely the best day of our life because it's the only day we get to give and receive love. Whatever happened yesterday, whatever happened a week ago, those days are gone. Today is the day we get to give and receive love. We get to make decisions about who and how we're going to be. Today is the only day we get to do this. Who knows, for some of you, it could even be your last day. I hope not. I hope today is not your last day, but it could be. And so you just don't know today is the best day of your life because you get to experience all God and the universe might have for you on this very day. And so my kids would just moan, but what I know to be certain is that this is the only day we're alive. We aren't sure about tomorrow and yesterday is gone. And so in our efforts, really finding ways to maximize these days, extract the most out of them in our relationships, in our experiences, in our commitments, in our efforts to be. You know, one of the things that I've been saying lately is today, the good news is today is the best day of your life. The don't know if it's good or not good news is that you today are the best version of you you'll ever be. We live in a world where people talk about them becoming the best version of themselves and them aspiring to be this better version somewhere in the future. And I hope each of us get a little better every day. That's our description of best daily, is we, we're the best at getting better every day. Except today is last year's future. Some of you a year ago said, I'm going to be a better version of myself. And lo and behold, this is it. So maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. But I do know that today you are the best version of yourself you're ever going to be. And so the question is, how can we make that just a little bit better? Throughout the course of this 90 minutes, my hope and aspiration is that you find ways to get just a little bit better today. What really causes us to have effective, ongoing people relationships developed in light of our culture? And I just wrote down three things here to share with you. One of the common denominators I've seen as I've engaged with all different kinds of organizations, for-profit, higher ed, companies and associations is that if there is not joy in the midst of the people engaging, there will continuously be the division, the silos, the separation, the feelings of just fractions and friction that happens. I have found a commitment to joy is one of the greatest things you and I can do as leaders is fostering this space where laughter happens. You know, there's a big movement about happiness, which to me is a very surface level, though there's lots of great data on kind of how people find some meaning and meaningfulness in their work that maybe contributes to happiness. But the truth is this idea of joy is from the relationships that we have that we bring and draw out of one another. So one of my thoughts for you is, how are you hearing laughter take place in the midst of difficulty? Because you and I all have hard work to do, difficult decisions to make, lots of work to do. And oftentimes people feel this sense of being overwhelmed. And when that sense of overwhelmingness happens, it seems to crush this place that joy resides. And it leads, seems to, to limit our ability to access that 
And you and I are the key to not eliminating people's workloads, but really bringing into each other's life a place where joy can happen, where laughter can exist, where enjoyment through the process. What I find, you know, in this whole quiet quitting and the efforts of, you know, anti hustle culture and our, uh, our desires to create a place where people do what they need to do and then they get out of there and do something else they enjoy, that it may not even be we were able to shape meaning in every activity, but we can create and shape an environment where joy is available in every action, task, uh, program, responsibility that happens. You and I can do that if we want to be conscious about it. The second thing that I just jotted down here, knowing I was going to spend some time with you, is particularly in light of, of the current conversations that are happening around how people are showing up to work, what people are bringing to the work environment. Again, whether it's from their home, from their the remote uh, Starbucks, whether it's in their bed, whether it's at the office is, well, let me just say this. I, I worked at a place whoo, 25 years ago, beginning 30 years ago now, 25 to 30 years ago, beginning of my career, and I never forget, we had a season that was really hard where some of us, we went without pay for a little bit. Like it was a, it was just a real difficult season, but we came out of it. A couple years later, gentleman was on the team with us, with me. He was leaving and he was saying to the executive leader at the time, hey, listen, remember when I made those sacrifices a couple years ago, you owe me. You, owe, you said you would do something back then and I want it now. And I, I remember being so struck by that, that I thought, how strange that he carried that for a couple of years and then actually brought it out. Because one of the principles and really one of the habits that I've put into place in my life that I find to be really useful is that I, and I gotta see how I wrote it down because I, I, I didn't put language to it, but I choose my sacrifice. Every day I'm choosing to sacrifice and the sacrifice I'm making is by my own choosing. Some of these things that we're hearing today is kind of people resisting, like things are being asked. And you and I always have a choice. We can quit today. We can choose to have a bad attitude today. We can choose not to do excellence today. We can choose how we're going to do what we do. And uh, can we bring something positive from it? Or are we gonna bring something negative? We choose our words in the situation. And so I've determined even when things are asked of me that I don't necessarily want to get to do, want to do or enjoy doing, that somehow I've got to convert it in my mind. I'm choosing to make this sacrifice because if I don't, what happens is we carry bitterness, we carry anger towards folks, we get disgruntled with ourselves, we come uh, uh, wore out. And you know, one of the things that people appreciate about me, they say, is my energy. Oh, just had your energy. And, and I think this is another thing that I've done that I don't carry this sense of you owe me, company, boss, leader, organization. You, I did this for you. Now you do. It's this idea of I'm going to choose my sacrifice. And I would encourage you with yourself, with your teams, think about how you're daily choosing the efforts you're making, that that's your sacrifice to choose. That's not being done to us. That's not something I have to do. Something in context of how I look at it, I'm going to choose to make these decisions for myself. And then the third one that I wrote down is just a long-term thinking. Just these three ideas of how we can show up every day to bring our best daily, to shape an environment that has joy. We're choosing our sacrifice and then we're thinking long-term. You know, in, in light for myself, even the idea of thinking long-term isn't just about the organization that I'm going to stay rooted in it for the next 20 years and I'm here for the next 20 years, but what do making decisions today, how do they affect me as a person long-term in what I'm choosing to do or not do? And so, listen, this day is already wrapping up. We're two minutes to, oh my goodness, one minute to one o'clock. And so I like to start on time and end on time. And so thank you so much for joining us. I'd ask you to consider, I know Monica, we're going to send something out at the end of the day for the, your takeaways from John, from Monica, from Randy, from David, even in this brief rambling I've done here with you, hopefully you've got something useful that, that you can apply today. My goal was you'd be encouraged, that you would have something that caused you to smile, and that you would have a useful, practical, tactical 
um, action you could do today and in the future. So thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to be here with us and to join us. And hopefully we'll get to do it again sometime because I love these people and I love getting to share things and be a part of people's lives that cause us to get just a little bit better every day. Listen, today is the best day of your life. Please live it, love it, and make the most of it.